Hello Dreamers and welcome to The Sleepy Scholar, the podcast that helps you learn in your dreams. I'm Debbie and tonight as we drift off to sleep, I invite you to join me on a voyage back through time to ancient Ireland. Together we will follow in the footsteps of Cúchollán, the fabled hero of Ulster, as he embarks on his journey of destiny. Back in my school days, I remember hearing a tale that sticks with me even now. It tells the story of an extraordinary childhood, not just of a hero, but of a legendary figure from Irish mythology. I know the feeling of being awake while the world sleeps, your mind buzzing with thoughts. But fear not, we're in this together. Take a deep breath and let go of your troubles, just for tonight. If you enjoy our time together, do subscribe to the channel. Your support really means so much to me and it encourages me to keep telling these stories for you so that we can both find a bit of peace at the end of the day. Now fluff up your pillow, get cosy and let's just take a couple of minutes to unwind. Picture yourself standing in an ancient woodland. The night air hums with a peaceful melody, easing away any worries. The towering trees exude a comforting warmth, their ageless wisdom seeping into the earth beneath your feet. Listen to the gentle rustle of the dew-kissed leaves, filling you with a serene stillness. Inhale deeply. Take in the crisp scent of the forest. With each exhale, Feel a wave of calm wash over you, as if the entire world is breathing in unison, guiding you towards sleep. In this sacred space, you are protected and safe embraced by the gentle arms of nature. Fado, Fado, in the heart of ancient Ireland, beneath a canopy of twinkling stars, the night was still. The air carried the earthy scent of heather and moss, mingled with the faint whisper of leaves rustling in the gentle breeze. This was a sacred night. 
when the veil between the earthly realm and the other world grew thin and whispers of destiny stirred in the air. It was a night that felt like it could change everything, as if fate itself hung in the air with every breath. This was the kind of night where legends were born. In this sacred hour, the druids and seers of the land lay in deep sleep, their minds floating on a sea of dreams. Visions fluttered before their closed eyes, bathed in shades of shining silver and verdant emerald. Symbols and signs weaved intricate patterns in the tapestry of their minds, revealing secrets and prophecies. Amidst the flickering, luminous glow of their visions, the druids glimpsed the hazy outline of a hero yet to be born. The threads of time trembled with the weight of his destiny, woven intricately into existence by the hands of fate. He stood tall and powerful, a beacon of hope that would cut through the darkness threatening to consume the world. His path was illuminated by the wisdom of ancient legends, passed down from generations before him and fueled by the boundless potential of a future yet unwritten. The air around him hummed with the energy of his purpose, radiating outward like ripples on a lake. He would be a force to be reckoned with, a steadfast protector, forged by the forces of time itself. As the night wore on, rumours of these dreams took root in the hearts of the people, spreading like wildfire through the villages and townlands of the country. The excitement and anticipation that crackled in the air was palpable, like electricity coursing through their veins. Each whispered prophecy acted as a spark, igniting flames of hope in the hearts of all who heard them. The darkness seemed to hold a sense of magic and possibility, as if anything could happen under the cloak of night. Jechtina, sister of Krohor Maknasa, the powerful king of Ulster, roamed the lush countryside under the gentle moonlight. She followed a narrow path that led her to a babbling brook, its glistening surface reflecting the ancient stories whispered by the water as it cascaded through the peaceful night. 
It was in this idyllic setting that destiny intervened, orchestrating a mystical encounter that would change Dietina's life forever. Dietina knelt quietly by the edge of the stream, her hand skimming the water's surface to collect it in a small vessel. As she focused on the task at hand, a flicker of movement caught her eye and she turned to see a tiny creature moving among the moonbeams like a ghost from another realm. Intrigued, she reached out with delicate fingers, hoping to touch the otherworldly being. Her fingertips brushed against its ethereal form and in an instant, it was gone leaving behind only a fleeting shimmer in her memory. Jechtina raised the cup to her lips and took a small tentative sip. As the water quenched her thirst, she felt a sudden surge of energy, like a tiny but powerful presence had taken root inside her. Unknown to her, she had just swallowed a she, a mystical creature straight out of ancient myths and legend. Little did she know, this tiny seed of destiny now resided within her, ready to sprout into something beyond her wildest dreams. She could feel its magic coursing through her veins, filling her with an otherworldly energy that she could not explain or resist. Excitement and wonder bubbled up inside her as she realised that her life was about to change in unimaginable ways. As the weeks passed, a gentle swell began to grow with Injectina, a life conceived in the embrace of moonlight and magic, destined to change the course of history. The child within her seemed to pulse with its own energy, like a tiny flame flickering and growing stronger with each passing day. And when the time came for her to bring forth new life into the world, the earth itself seemed to stand still, as if aware of the significance of this birth. The leaves on the trees trembled with excitement, the birds silenced their songs and even the breeze held its breath in anticipation. The druids had spoken of a hero foretold, and all eyes were on Jechtna as she prepared to give birth to this destined child. The night cloaked everything in a deep darkness, except for the shining stars that lit up Jectina's face as she brought her son into the world. He seemed to be made of a mixture of starlight and shadows, his first cry breaking through the stillness of the night. As if in response, the air around him seemed to pulse with raw magic and the very earth itself rejoiced at his arrival. 
people gathered around the baby in awe and wonder, their hearts brimming with dreams of the greatness he might one day achieve. Under the spell of the moon's silvery light, Jectina cradled her newborn child in her arms. His delicate features a wonder to behold. His presence in her life was evidence of the powerful magic that had brought him into existence. As she looked upon him, bathed in the gentle radiance of the night sky, she could feel his potential for greatness pulsating within her heart. He was perfect. Every breath he took seemed to be infused with a sense of hope and promise. As the days passed by like a slow and steady flame, talk of the child's arrival spread like wildfire through the nearby villages. For in the name of this child lay the key to the destiny of his people. A name whispered with reverence by the elders who had studied the prophecies of old for years. He was known as Satanta, the one who knows the way. A name that held ancient power and represented the greatness within him. As he grew, his name became a legend, carried on the wind like a secret melody that enchanted all who heard it. Satanta was unlike any other child of his time, his features a mirror of the gods themselves his gaze ablaze with the fire of a thousand suns. His laughter echoed through the hills and valleys of his homeland, a melody that danced upon the wind, carrying with it the promise of a future filled with adventure and glory. But it was not just his appearance that set him apart. It was his character, his essence, his very soul. Satanta was a force of nature, a storm of energy and passion. His spirit as fierce and untamed as the raging fire that burned through the forests of Ireland. And as he moved through the world, his presence demanded respect, drawing the attention of all who crossed his path. From the moment he took his first steps, it was clear that he possessed a strength beyond his years. He had honed his muscles through countless hours of wrestling with his peers. His broad shoulders spoke of his physical prowess, while his sharp eyes and confident stance revealed his unwavering determination. No one in the village dared to challenge him, for they all knew that his skills and strength were unmatched, and none could stand against him. But... Perhaps it was in the quiet hours of the night when all living things slept and the stars glimmered with secrets for the moon to hear that Satanta truly shone brightest. For it was then that he would sit beneath the towering oaks that had stood witness to countless generations before him he looked up, dreaming of a life full of excitement and success just beyond his grasp. As the world around him slept, 
Satanta felt sure that his destiny was not limited by the darkness, but guided by his own determination and drive. One fateful evening, as the mist shrouded the hills, Kin Krohur stood at his castle's threshold, watching his nephew playing the ancient game of hurling. Satanta's skill was a sight to behold. His every movement was deliberate, each swing of his kamon calculated to perfection. With lightning-fast reflexes, he intercepted the schlitter with ease, sending it soaring through the air with mighty force. Krohor watched in awe as Satanta manoeuvred through the other players on the field. His movements, fluid and graceful. The other boys were no match for his natural talent. The king was well impressed by his nephew's skills and invited him to a feast that evening as his guest. It was an honour reserved only for the most skilled and talented individuals. And Krohor believed this boy belonged in their ranks. Amidst the flickering torchlight, Cullen, the renowned smith of the village, stood tall and proud at the head of the gathering. His fiery forge glowed behind him, casting a comforting warmth in contrast to the chill of the evening. The delicious aroma of roasting meats wafted through the air, mingling with the sweet scent of blooming flowers that lined the perimeter of the hall. As the strains of the harp strings filled the air, laughter and conversation swirled around Cullen like a lively dance. Satisfied that all his guests were present, Cullen called forth his fierce and loyal hound, a legendary creature with fur as black as midnight and eyes as bright as stars to stand guard over his home and protect those within it. The powerful hound prowled the perimeter, its eyes glowing with intensity, evidence of its immense strength and swift agility. The villagers, well aware of the danger that lurked within the hound's territory, wisely kept their distance, knowing that one wrong step could lead to their demise. As the hound was released, Satanta remained lost in thought, hypnotised by the breathtaking beauty of the setting sun. The sky was ablaze with hues of red and gold, the dying light casting a warm glow over the landscape. His heart swelled with unspoken joy at the sight, causing him to lose track of time and arrive late to the celebration. As he made his way closer to the feast, Satanta could hear the murmur of conversation and laughter growing louder. But amidst the cheerful sounds, there was a low growl that echoed through the air, sending a chill down his spine. The hairs on the back of his neck stood on end as he cautiously approached Colin's home. Suddenly, 
The large black hound appeared in front of him, its lips curled back in a snarl and its powerful muscles tensed for attack. Satanta's heart raced as he instinctively reached for his Kamon and Schlitter, ready to defend himself against this ferocious beast. As Colin's guests chatted and laughed, a bone-rattling growl suddenly echoed through the room. They sprinted to the door, eager to unravel the mystery that lay beyond. To everyone's astonishment, they found young Satanta standing at the threshold, facing the menacing hound with a calm and steady gaze. As the hound lunged forward with lightning speed, its jaw snapping shut mere inches from Satanta's outstretched arm. A hush fell over the noble gathering. Gasps of shock and fear rippled through the crowd as they watched in suspense, uncertain of what fate awaited the young warrior in their midst. The hound, its merciless eyes locked on the cowering crowd, briefly shifted its attention away from Satanta. Seizing the opportunity, the boy sprinted away and put some distance between himself and the raging beast. But his relief was short-lived as the hound let out a deafening howl and charged towards him with even greater fury. With a swift and precise movement, he struck the Schlitter, sending it flying towards the hound with a force that echoed through the night. The worn, cracked leather ball soared through the air, propelled by the boy's powerful clout. With a thud, it struck the hound a beast of legendary strength and size, causing it to stumble and fall to the ground. The boy's muscles strained as he overcame the animal's resistance with his unexpected might. Everyone gasped as the mighty animal fell heavily to the unforgiving stones beneath him. The massive hound, once a formidable force of nature, now lay crumpled and defeated, its chest heaving with laboured breaths as it struggled to hold on to its last moments of life. The once vicious exterior now showed a delicate and fragile side, both heartbreaking and beautiful. The hound's eyes, once fierce, now dimmed as the life slowly ebbed away from its immense form. The villagers who had watched the dramatic confrontation in stunned silence could hardly believe their eyes as they witnessed the legendary creature's downfall. Satanta stood over the fallen hound his chest heaving with exertion and his eyes filled with a mix of sorrow and relief. Despite the danger it posed, he couldn't help but feel a pang of sadness at the sight of the magnificent beast lying defeated at his feet. The weight of what he had done settled on his shoulders as he realised the consequences of his actions. Cullen, who had rushed to the scene at the sound of the commotion, arrived just in time to see his loyal hound take its final breaths. His heart ached with indescribable grief as he looked upon his fallen companion. He struggled to speak through his tears as he faced Satanta, his voice weighed down by sorrow. 
you have taken the life of my loyal hound, the protector of my home. What do you have to say for yourself, Ahashur? Satanta met Colin's eyes with solemn determination. I make this vow to you, Colin, he declared, his words ringing through the stillness like a bell tolling for loss. Until a pup of this hound is raised and ready to fulfil its duty, I myself will stand guard over your home. Cullen's eyes glistened with unshed tears as he beheld the young warrior standing before him, his solemn pledge hanging in the air like an unbreakable oath. The weight of Satanta's words settled upon him, piercing through his grief and stirring something profound within his soul. He considered Satanta's words. Though still heavy with grief, a flicker of hope shone in his eyes. Here was a noble young man, willing to take responsibility for what he had done. Satanta held Colin's gaze steadily, unwavering in his commitment. At last, Colin nodded a glimmer of possibility slowly rising from the ashes of grief. Though the great hound's absence would forever leave an ache, there was a chance to begin again anew. The crowd gathered around Colin and the boy in wonder and curiosity. With silent dignity, Colin extended a hand towards Satanta. A simple gesture of trust and forgiveness. The boy felt his heart race as he humbly bowed his head in acceptance. Knowing that he now carried the weight of responsibility for his promise to protect and serve Colin's household. It felt like a heavy cloak settling upon his shoulders. He clenched his jaw and vowed to himself that no matter the obstacles, he would uphold his promise with relentless determination. As night fell, Satanta stood guard outside Colin's home. His eyes trained on the horizon as he stood vigil over the sleeping village. The stillness of the night was broken only by the rustle of leaves in the breeze and the distant howl of a lone wolf. This was his duty to bear, a penance for the life he had taken a burden he would carry with him long after the night had passed. And so, from that night on, the boy became known as Ku Chollen, the Hound of Cullen, a title that would resound through the centuries, a tribute to his bravery and integrity. His actions would become the stuff of myths, his name synonymous with courage, forever enshrined in the mythology of Ireland. But the story of Cúchollan was far from over. It was just the beginning of a saga that would echo through the ages. And as he looked towards the future, the young man knew that whatever challenges may come, he would face them head on, with the same unwavering determination that had carried him this far. For he was Ku Chollen, the Hound of Cullen, and his legend would live on forever.
just like the mighty Guhalan, who faced each challenge with unwavering bravery and determination. We too possess an inner strength that can guide us through the trials of life. As we drift off now into the realm of dreams, let us carry with us the spirit of Kuholan, remembering that even in the darkest of times, there is always a glimmer of light to guide us forward. May your dreams tonight be filled with visions of courage and hope, and may you awaken refreshed and renewed ready to face the challenges of a new day. I'm ever so thankful for your company on this journey through the rich tales of Irish mythology. And until we cross paths again, may your sleep be sound and may the tales of old guide you through life's darkest hours. Hawaii. Good night.